Hey guys, I'm Joe, this is Theo Joe Tech. In this video, the topic is more about clothing tech, I guess, but it still counts. Now, basically, I wanted to talk about wicking materials, which are used in certain types of clothing, which basically, if you know what they do, is that they bring moisture away from your body if you're working out, or even not necessarily being athletic, but they just keep your skin dry, allowing the sweat to evaporate and keep you more insulated. And I wanted to talk about exactly how these clothes do that and how they're different from regular clothes such as cotton or other materials like that. Now what these materials do is actually take advantage of a physics principle called capillary action. And if you haven't heard this name before, you've definitely seen this in action in real life. Basically capillary action is a principle that says that fluid will go through tubes of different tiny diameters called capillaries and they will flow through that with no assistance and even against other forces such as gravity. The thinner the capillary or the more porous and fine the material is, the higher up the fluid can go. So this actually is the reason why when you put a paintbrush into paint or water, the water kind of gets pulled up into the brush because the areas between the little brush hairs actually form little capillaries so the water can get pulled up. Also, paper, if you dip paper into water, then you'll notice that the water starts to seep up into the paper against gravity. That's because the pores and the porousness of the paper forms capillaries, and it's the same capillary action that pulls the water up even though gravity is working against it. Now, I'm not really gonna get into the details of the physics of how this works. Really, all it is is intermolecular forces and the surface tension works in such a way that this happens. And basically, all you have to know for this video is that if there's a thin tube or thin porousness, then fluid can get pulled through it. So let's get back into the main topic, the clothing, specifically these wicking fabrics. Now, what these are are typically non-absorbent materials that are composed in such a way where they form little capillaries or mini tube structures in the fabric itself so that when moisture is, when it's against the skin and there's moisture or sweat or whatever, the moisture gets pulled into the fabric. It increases the surface area without being stuck to the fabric like cotton and just being wet. It, it pulls it in, increases the surface area, and then that allows the fluid or moisture to be evaporated much more quickly than it would just on your skin. A specific example you've probably heard of is polyester. It's very often used for wicking material. And also wool has great wicking properties and it also performs better in wetter conditions than say cotton. Now typically when you think of athletic clothes, you think of running and getting all hot and sweaty outside, but wicking materials are also very important for insulation because when you are in a cold climate, you really want a wicking material as the base layer to pull moisture away from your skin so that it's less conductive. If you have a material such as cotton, which gets wet and holds moisture really well, then that becomes conductive and loses its insulation properties. So a lot of times what you'll do is have a very thin wicking layer, like a sock liner beneath your regular sock in a very cold climate so that if you sweat or anything, it pulls it away from your skin, which can draw it more into the higher layers, such as a big thick wool sock, which increases the surface area even more so that your feet stay dry. Even if you get a little bit wet, really sweaty, it evaporates quickly and has great insulation properties. It's actually dangerous to wear cotton, or it can be at least, in a wet, cold condition because when cotton gets wet, it's not great at wicking. So then when it gets wet, it conducts heat away from your body a lot easier, which makes you even cold. And as I mentioned, you lose that insulation properties. So the wicking materials are great for not only keeping you cool, but also keeping you warm, depending on how they're used. And I thought just for fun, we could take a really close look at different types of clothing, wicking and non-wicking, really up close with my macro lens, so we can compare the two. First, we can take a look at a 100% cotton shirt. You might be able to see why that would tend to absorb a lot of water. And then now we can compare to a 100% polyester shirt, which is specifically advertised as being a wicking material. And you can probably see how the structure is significantly different from the cotton and how that might 
add to the ability to pull water away and increase the surface area so it can be evaporated. It might not be that obvious because I don't know if this macro lens is really designed to be a microscope, but we might be able to see a difference and it should be interesting nonetheless. So hopefully you guys found this video a little bit eye-opening, maybe a bit interesting, even though it's not computer stuff. You let me know in the comments section what you thought and if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up so I know you guys enjoyed it and maybe I'll make more stuff like this. If you want to continue watching some other videos, I've got two right on the right hand side. You can just click them or look in the description for the same link like if you're on a phone. And if you want to subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, a bunch of different types of videos. So I think it should be worth it there. I look forward to hearing from you guys. So thanks for watching. I will see you next time. Have a good one.